Good morning, everybody. I'm waiting on the guys to show up. They should be here any moment. So what I'm doing today, um, I got some, I got some speed feed heads. Speed feed. I think I'm finally gonna swap them out, man. After watching um, Brian Shane with Top Notch, you know, swap out his heads. I asked him if it really worked and if he liked it. And you said yes, so I'm going to swap them out. So, I mean, it's something I've always wanted to do like 10 years ago, 5 years ago, and I never did it. So, um, you know, I like steel weed eaters, obviously, but the thing that I do not like about steel weed eaters is they just do not last near as long. As a whole head, they do not last near as long, and they cost way more money. Um, we're always replacing a cap and a ball, and you're talking, you know, dude, you're talking like 11 bucks for one part and, you know, 7 bucks for another part. I mean, and it's all the time, you know, it's all the time. So the speed feed heads, I mean, you end up just replacing the bump and that, you know, the bump part, outer part eventually, and that's it. Um, but, man, I just, um, you know, the eyelets on the steel come out. Yeah, you can try gluing them. That doesn't work because the plastic just expands heat and all that stuff. It just never, they just, that's one thing that I've always hated. So the speed feed head and, you know, the guys have to, you know, cut the string twice, you know, and all that crap and wheel it around. And I don't know, I, I've never been a fan of the head. You know, I love, I'm a huge fan of steel weed eaters, but I'm not a fan of their, the feed head. So um, the string, you know, the heads, whatever, whatever. Um, so we're going to swap that out with speed feed heads. You know, it's just four pulls of string clip run it straight through wind up and you're good to go way faster man you know no springs no any of that crap so definitely going to switch over to that and i think i heard that steel am i wrong did i hear that steel is going to be switching over to some kind of speed feed style head or something i don't know man we all talk but anyway i got those i'm gonna put those on today um that's gonna be awesome and what else am i doing um, we're just going to mow this place. We're going to put some sod down. Um, we got stuck here like a month ago in the rain. The client or the, the resident, the resident here is not really happy that the tire marks are still in there. We tried sand. That's not working. Um, so we're just going to end up resodding it. So David's out with the dump truck right now. He's emptying it and then he's going to go grab the sod and head down here. So that's, uh, that's what we're into. So as soon as the guys get here, we're going to rock. Here's what we're dealing with, brand spanking new tire. Fun day. Fun day already. I don't know what caught this tire to rip this thing to pieces. Brand new tire. Look at all the threads happened, and everything. I no, I mean, obviously something was on the road, obviously. I don't know. Whatever it was, I did it. I'm driving, I did it. I got to say, as soon as I turned in, we heard a boom. And that's what I happened. mean, uh, maybe it was just a piece of shit old tire. I don't know. We got the other one in there, yeah, right? Yeah, the other right. trailer tire in there. I'll just, whenever we're later, what we'll do is back this up on the curb, mm -hmm. which will lift this off the ground, and then we'll just change it out. Oh no, just who did? As soon as I turned in. Hey, just so y'all know, these are on backwards. All right, guys, so other day, the uh, I noticed the fender got ripped off. I talked to the guys about it. Stuff happens, pulling out of the shop, and you know, the, the tire that was on here blew and it caught the, um, you know, the big concrete posts that come out that are like blue and yellow. They caught that um, and, you know, messed up the tire. So they put the tire on and swapped it out. This is a brand spanking new tire, um, but you can see where it is just worn right there. Do you guys see that? Let's see, hold on a second, let me pull this in. See that? There you go, see that? So it didn't really make sense that a brand new tire was, was already worn out on the top. And then I noticed this. You guys tell me, you guys tell me what you see that isn't right.
Do you see it yet? These are on backwards. They're on backwards. These should be turned around the other way, inserted into the rim, into the you know the mounting holes in the rim. Um, you can see there's already damage. It's probably wallowed out the rim. This rim is now probably junk, and it's because they put these on backwards. So that happens. This is going down the road like this. Small vibrations with all this heat, heating it up, wearing all of this brand new rubber right off of this tire just in two days. Right there. That sucks. So this, this, you're talking $500 gone and the uh, actually $600 gone. The other rim and tire is gone and this is damaged. So there's 600 bucks right there in two days. Am I upset about it? Absolutely. But stuff happens, man. Um, it happens when you're by yourself and it happens when you have guys. So there's nothing I can do about it. Um, the guys are awesome and all that, but things are gonna happen and it is what it is, okay? Okay, so while we're waiting for the guys, I wanna show you the new toy. So we ended up getting, well, I ended up getting a, a Mavic Pro. Um, ended up selling my DJI um, Phantom 2. And I found a guy that um, got rid of this super, super cheap for whatever reason. I don't really care. Um, so this thing is freaking awesome. As you saw from the last video I just put up, um, it's going to take a while to get used to it. So I got three batteries with this thing, the controller that my Note 8 um, sets into and plugs into for a monitor and, you know, settings, control and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, man, this thing is so freaking, this thing is so dope. And I love the Alpine white. It's just pretty sick, man. So um, here it is. This thing is so sick. I can't wait to like really get used to it and to really like find, um, you know, find my own way to like, you know, you know, come up with really cool shots and things like that. It's got tracking mode and all kinds of really cool, neat features on it um, where we can just mow and it can just follow me for a while. All kinds of cool stuff, man. So, anyway, I just had to show you guys the new
everything up there and I left the guys um, I just have to get back and um, do some bidding I got um, we got these two condos that are managed by the same the same management company and they don't want to split it up they want uh, one guy to do you know one company to do both of their properties so um, we got invited in with one other landscaper um, a couple weeks ago um, right now they have uh, you know somebody big like Brightview I think is there um, so we're going to bid this property, these two properties are beautiful, they're immaculate, they're very picky. I mean like super picky, man. Um, anyways, they're like landscape architects and they do major, major landscape designs for like, you know, stadiums, arenas, things like that. Um, and they manage these. They're part of a management company with these condo associations. So they reached out to us, um, which was very humbling and freaking awesome. And they reached out to one other guy um, and so I have till tomorrow to get this bid together. Um, I've been waiting on McCall because we subbed them out, you know, for all the fertilization and pesticides. So they got back to me. Uh, they do. They want arena and that stuff is expensive. They want everything, man. It's crazy. So um, I'm going to go home. I'm going to go put this bid together. I'm going to see. Um, the, here's the thing. Like this particular place, they want everything line itemed and I've never seen this before. Like uh, they have different diameters of, of uh, tree limbs that need to be trimmed. How much would it cost to do a two inch, a four inch, a six inch, and an eight inch tree limb? Per tree limb, a three gallon per one gallon. I mean, basically I have to go through, um, it was about 30 plant line items. Um, it was like around 15 tree and palm plant items. Um, all kinds of stuff, it's crazy. That all has to go in the bid. And the point is, is whenever I say, hey, you, you have three ligustrums that are dying, they're just like, all right, cool. They already know how much it's gonna cost to replace them if it's three gallons. I get that. But man, bidding, that's kind of a monster, dude. So anyways, whatever. I'm gonna put that together and that's gonna be that. Let's talk about what happened with the tire and stuff. I didn't know that the trailer was damaged and that the fender was damaged. I didn't know that until I looked at it. Uh, apparently a tire blew out as they were pulling out. It shifted over. Um, anyway, it just it really just kind of halfway destroyed that fender and it damaged the front of the trailer. Am I upset about it? Yep. I am upset about it because it costs a lot of money. Uh, when they pulled out, it also hit the tire, um, blew the tire out, bent the rim. So, it happens, I guess. I'm not mad at them, I just tell them to please be careful, just be careful. So, today, as you saw, that's a brand spanking new tire. It just went on there yesterday. And I thought it was odd that I saw the wires, you know, the belts, you know, um, popping out of, you know, it wore down all the way to the belts. How in the heck does that happen? And as you saw, the lug nuts are tapered. You have to have that tapered end of your lug nut into the rim. It seats the rim to the hub. That's the whole purpose of having a coned or tapered lug nut. In case you guys don't know, because there apparently and obviously are guys that don't realize that or know that. Don't ever put your lug nuts on backwards because what you're doing is you're not center, you're not centering that lug nut in that opening for that rim. You're not centering it. So it is, it's not centered. So that you have five holes that are uncentered and just have really not that much torque on them in comparison when they're not centered. Um, and that wheel is moving around while you're driving down the road. Warp, um, it's just, it's vibrating. It's small warping, it's like warping. You know what I mean? It's like going down the road like this, like minutely, just enough to heat that tire up, driving down an interstate to where it literally wore through all of that rubber down to the belts since yesterday. 
that's insane. So we have a damaged wheel and rim. That rim's going to be damaged because I could see um, I could see it damaged. My concern is that my studs are damaged also. That's that's a big concern. That those studs are damaged because the rim moving around, and that's going to suck. If that's the case. I have to punch out all those studs and replace all the studs. So that'll be two wheels, two tires, studs if not the hub on the trailer. The front right tire, they don't know what happened to it. It was off the bead. I don't even have to say anything. I just, you know. I noticed on the Skag that the side guard was ripped off of this deck, just like the Hustler. And my old crew leader was the guy mowing both of those and that ripped both of those off. The uh, adjuster for the left side of the deck on the Skag is now loose. The right one's tight, the left one's loose. I mean, it's enough to just make you, um, it's enough to make you super angry <clears throat> and I show all the guys today and I talk to them and I go this is why people prefer to buy pieces of crap junk equipment instead of $12,000 mowers $600 blowers $700 hedge trimmers etc you get my point this is why people don't do that this is why whenever you have employees this is why I know guys that are huge and they will only buy used equipment uh, or they don't care what mower it is. They buy the cheapest mower matching the deck size that they need. God, it's so frustrating, man. So just in two days, we're talking, we're talking, I mean, man, over $1,000 in damage. We just, that's just sad. I don't even know what to say. I'm stuttering. I usually end things on a positive note. Here's my positive note. There's nothing I can do about it now. <laughs> oh my God. Anyways, the positive is I was having fun with the drone. That was fun. If I think about the stuff that's been broken and how it got broke, it'll ruin my day. So I'm going to try not to let it ruin my day. That guy was flipping me off because I went around it because he was going slow in the fast lane. I don't even care what people flip me off. You can flip me off all you want. It's your finger. Like, what does that mean? Like, what am I supposed to do because you flip me off? I don't know. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>